The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. TV50 Sports with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. From Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham, featuring the best Pendleton bowlers from around New England. Gonna split it. Look at this. Yes! Oh, wow! <laughs> right in the oh. pocket. Oh, there was never a doubt about that one. Look at ball. Yeah. Now your host for Pendleton Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham. Dan Murphy is here. I'm Doug Brown, and we're ready to go once again with a ladder championship match. The big money on the line today. And uh, Dean DeRocher is the uh, number one seed, trying to knock off Billy Caulfield, who's won two in a row. Exciting ones at that. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's meet the two bowlers. First of all, our number one seed, who's been waiting four weeks for this day to come, and it has finally arrived for Dean DeRocher out of Manchester. It's great, because uh, Dean is a top seed, and um, although I don't put too much credence in averages, he's the lowest average of the six bowlers. So. It's a good example of throw the averages out the window. They don't mean a thing. Uh, he was able to have a six, uh, 661 to qualify for the show. Uh, 110 average. He's top seed. He's bowling for the big money. So that's uh, over 100 pins more than his average for the five strings. That's correct. That's, he had a great day that day, and he's hoping for another one today. All right, and he will be bowling against a guy who's already won two in a row here on Stars and Strikes, that man, Bill Coffold from Milford. It's his first time in front of the lights, and, boy, he's had two tough matches going right down the last few boxes. So... Uh, and the heat's on. He seems to rise to the occasion, and we'll see if he can do it again this week for the big money. $200 to the runner-up, in fact, $400 to the ladder championship winner. And, of course, we'll have $10 on the line once again for the bonus ball jackpot, as we had a winner last week. We'll tell you more about that later on. And we're going to get this championship match underway in just two minutes, so come right back on Stars and Strikes. Ladder championship time here on Stars and Strikes, and those are the two bowlers remaining after the first four weeks. Ron Root won two in a row to start this ladder, and now Bill Coffold has won two in a row to propel himself into the championship match against our number one seed, Dean DeRocher, and it is Dean himself who will get us started here in our ladder championship this week on Stars and Strikes. Dean will start it off on lane 32 for us, making his first appearance on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. He didn't happen to hear us mention it the last several weeks. All six of the bowlers in this ladder were with us for the first time. And uh, that has not happened in a while. Oh, that's the way to start. Wow. <laughs> Big crowd again, and you can hear them. Half Worcester converts for the spare. Always nice to get that first one under your belt. A little determined look on his face. Sounds like Mile High Stadium in here. <laughs> Four horsemen, one, three, six, and ten on the right. Six fill on the spear. Twenty-five start for Dean. And now Bill Coffold. A two-time winner. Two weeks ago, 347 to 345 against Ron Root. And then last week, 382 to 359 against Scott Richardson. Just missing. That 382, 359 was much closer than right. It really picked up a spare eight, spare seven, the last two frames to really stretch it out. He really didn't need anything, a couple pins in the ninth, but went right down to the last two frames. Bill just missing the head pin that time. He'll shoot at the 137 with frozen wood against the three now. 
may help deflect something. But he missed the object. Six pins the difference. We'll be reminding you uh, throughout the day today that uh, next week we start a brand new ladder series here on Stars and Strikes and it will be the Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship. Oh, good looking ball there by Dean. Leaves a 4-7. Slides by the object being that 4. Still there for nine bucks. Right on the head pin again, and this time oh. it'll be the four and the ten. I thought that wood was going to trip that four, but four pin in the wood. Snap it off the left side wall. Not quite catching in that wood. Took a second look at that. Boy, pretty good looking ball going in. But again, he crossing over in that one two, and I've mentioned the last couple weeks, this ball breaks so sharp at the end. It really has to be in the one three pocket, and his ball does a lot more damage going through. Dennis Noel getting some work. He hasn't had to make a lob call in a long time. No, hasn't kicked any field goals lately either. <laughs> People were sitting home saying, what did he say? What did he <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis, spitting image, I shouldn't say that. He's a likeness of Tony Franklin who kicks for the Patriots. Punching through, leaves some wood on the deck. Four seven with a three and a six. <laughs> Gets things flying around. He might be able to pick this up. No, didn't happen. Now those are the kind of shots that you your philosophy is to shoot for the least number of pins, trying to kick them into the most. Right. Um, I was going to mention that too, and you just brought it up. It just I just feel if I cut the three. Uh, I want to cut the three into the two and the four, but if I miss and hit the seven pin in that case, you know, there's a chance of something coming back for me. So. As long as the object pins are on the same parallel. Both bowlers trying to find the groove right now. Much the same as it's been the last few weeks. The okay, scores haven't been real high, but it's been exciting. Boy, a five box and just barely that for Dean DeRocher. He had that big half Worcester conversion for the spare in the first, but since then, no yeah. marks. Hasn't had another half Worcester to shoot at. And <laughs> <laughs> then take a crack at the five, six, and ten here with Wood. Well, can he fit the ball in there and catch the Wood and the five pin? We'll see. Nice yeah. shot. Nice shot. Carrying the ball off the piece of wood. Ball flies up into the five pin. The wood does the damage on the six and the ten. Very well done. And Bill Coffold, another ugly leave, shooting at the two six. Cut on the left side. 
Oh, mm. let's try. No, let's just try. He's going to make up some count, though, because of that five box Dean threw. So that makes the difference. Three, now opposite the spare in the sixth. Bill lives in Milford. He's the manager of Alicia's Restaurant in Milford. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, can't continually throw the ball in the pocket like that and not start getting some breaks. 5-7, nothing to show for it. Trying to cut the five on the right-hand side. Nope. Ten bucks. So Dean DeRocher will have a chance to add to his lead right now. And it'll be a seven fill for a 10 pin lead. Missing that object pin being the head pin, of course. Dean works at more business forms. He and his wife, Bernadette live in Manchester and they're expecting their first child in June. Well, well, here's a half whister. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he started with for a mark, the first box. Not this time. And he's really going to have to work here to get a good box out of this one. If you follow the show like many of the viewers do week by week, it's this very similar start that we had a few weeks ago between Billy Coffold and Ron Root. So Ron wasn't finishing up his marks. Of course, Billy was having trouble getting his first one. He kept pinning away. And, uh, the first string, uh, Ron Root had four marks, three spears and a strike, but it only was 18 pins ahead. That's why it's starting this week. It's amazing how you have recall of all that stuff. Well, you know, they just punch it up on our computer. Everything we ever want to know about the computer is right, I mean, uh, about the show is right here in front of me on this computer, which you have very expertly done, Doug, and printed out for me. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of work. Another important 10 for Bill Coffold. Well, he keeps it within 10, even though he hasn't got a mark yet. Missing with the half Worcester Brooklyn side this time. You mentioned this, uh, I believe, last week, Dan. Anytime Bill crosses over to that Brooklyn pocket, he's in trouble. Yeah, it doesn't seem to carry the pins as well. See, that's the pocket right there that he needs to hit. Well, chance to pick up a couple more pins in counties. Gained one already. He's going for it. Take a nine. Eight pins the difference. Well, someone was just tuning in saying, boy, uh, 75 after eight. Well, he's bowled a little better than that. Yeah. Billy Koffel's put the ball in the pocket a number of times, five, seven once. Just hasn't anything to shoot at. On the other hand, Dean DeRocher is looking at a single here for a 10 pin for a mark. Ooh, oh, wow, he fit that between there. He grazed the wood without hitting the 10 pin. And he kept the ball on the lane even though it hit the wood in the channel. Three, five, and nine, and the wood will help, perhaps. He's got to shoot it almost like the wood wasn't there. It's got to be high in the wood. Not quite that high. You know, capped it, missed that front pin. Good. 
103 for Dean. Five box hurt. As did a seven. And again, Bill Coffo with a ball that looked better than it turned out. Three, six, four, and seven. Trying to split the three and a six. Got to hurry, you know, it doesn't get there. This fellow Billy Coffold pins well. You see the nine boxes one, two, three, four, five, six nines, three tens. Last box still looking for his first mark. And again, another split getting worse. <laughs> I'd like to have that one stood up, stand up, I believe. Let's see how the wood. Now he wants that wood to come out as far as it will. No. Well, he may carry the ball off that front piece of wood, but I don't think it's up high enough for the ball to get into that six and ten. Uh, might be able to split the six and ten. That's what he's trying to do. Mm. And he did, but yeah. didn't get any action. Well, Bill apparently is headed for the uh, Magic 94. 94. Last couple weeks. Uh, Previous couple weeks, 94, one of two of 94 won the match. Ron Root did it once, and Billy Coffle himself did it once. And that's the figure he starts with, 94, no marks, just as he did two weeks ago. He trails by nine after one string. More of the ladder championship after this time out from Sandy's. Second string, ready to go, and Bill Coffold trailing by nine. Well, three, six, and ten, still looking for his first mark. Remember a few weeks ago, went 14 frames without one. He's into his 11th. But he won the match, obviously, because he's still here. Continues to be off target, and when he's on target, nothing good happens. Mm, boy, fine line there. If he had just caught the head pin. Yeah, he's, it looks like he's easing up in the ball a little bit, causing the speed to decrease, and when that happens, the, the hook increases. And he'll have to take a six box here. We have Dean Drosher, does most of his bowling at the Lakeside Lanes in Manchester and also Londonderry Bowling Center. 110 average and bowled 661 to qualify for the show. So any of your bowlers out there say that I'll never make the show. Well, there's a young fellow here that had his day in the sun and... <laughs> and now his day in the lights. Now his day in the lights, <laughs> right. which can be almost as hot as the sun up here under these lights, uh, yeah. especially when you're not used to it. just waiting to explode <laughs> something <laughs> happens but they haven't had a lot to cheer about so far the hottest they got was the first box of Dean when he picked up this half whister for a spare thought the roof was coming off since then they've been pretty quiet well Bill really caught a break there as he opened up with 15 and the best Dean DeRocher could do was 17 Oh boy. 
Oh, he's, Bill's still smiling. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Turns around, he's shaking his head, but he's still smiling. Yeah, and he knew what had happened there as soon as he let it go. Oh, nice out. Oh, do you believe that? It's gotta go down. The four pin is way off the spot, <laughs> but it's a seven bucks. Off target now too. Before he was least to when he wasn't getting any, any marks, he was hitting the head pin with that first ball. That looks pretty good. Oh, no luck. This would be an amazing story in itself. A fella can go two weeks with this many frames without getting a mark and then happen to come up with a victory. Dean DeRocher has just two marks in the first and sixth boxes of the first string. And those are the difference right now. He only leads by 11 in the match. Nine in the first game and two boxes completed here. In the second, looking at the four and the eight and some ugly wood out front. I try to play the four pin clean, four into the eight. That's what he tried to do. And got just that four. For a 10 to gain a few pins here on count. Gained a couple. Lead now 13. Well, this time he'll shoot at the six pin. We'll see what the wood does. way this week is going, it'll probably stop right in the worst possible location. Turned a little bit for him. He's got to make up his mind before he throws now because he's got a clear shot at it or he can elect to play the wood if he thinks he's going to cap it. That's what he's going to do. Nice shot. Nice shot. A spare for Dean DeRocher in the fourth. 26 and a spare up. And Bill Coffold, 32 through four. Both bowlers looking to catch fire here in the ladder championship match. We'll have more in a moment. Bill Coffold. Still looking for his first mark. This is his 15th box. Remember two weeks ago against Ron Root. This is the mark. This is the box he finally got his first mark in, and he's going to go longer than he did that match. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that he's still in the match. Very much so. His comedy to everything. Someone just yelled from the back, come on, reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> touch a few more of the pins than he has been, I think. Four horsemen plus the seven and the eight. Got oh, it eight. looks pretty good. Oh, oh wow. Whew. 16 frames, no marks. Crowd's behind him now. <laughs> See him get that first one. Dean DeRocher's lead is 13 plus this ball. And let's wait. He wants that one up, that head pin. One, seven, nine. Seven fill. 11 pin lead in this game. Plus the nine, 20 pin lead right now. Missed. Mixed doubles, 
starting next week in our next ladder series. Mixed Scotch doubles to be exact. The Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship. See a nice 10 by Dean. And now the 1, 2, 10. This show has looked like a, a tip show of how to convert some of the <laughs> difficult shots. Make that spare. <laughs> One, two, and ten. Got to be on that object pin being the head pin and either split the one, two, or have the ball go to the right and the ball go down and clear out the ten. No, well, it left it short. So, Bill Caulfield has another life. Oh boy, lose two on count there. Bill trails by 18 now. Nine coming in and nine more here in the second. Oh, right in the pocket that time. Tell me, tell me that this isn't a tough mark. <laughs> wow, 16 frames and now he's not even gonna have the help of the wood. He's gotta have it clean, the six pin. Uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> 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 Missed it. Wood came back and cleared it out for him, and well, right back to where we were before. Two, four, seven with the six pin, six fill. The wood has moved out a little bit. You're going to try to split the 2-4 or maybe the wood and the 3-pin at the same time. Uh, wood and the 2-pin at the same time. Uh, it's moving back. It looks like a split of the 2-4 now. The wood's still moving. And yep. Bill will wait it out because this could be critical. Mm, oh. Just missed it. <laughs> Someone said he didn't jump right. <laughs> he put a little body English on it after he let it go. and Well, he finally broke the markless streak anyway, and he got his first one up there. Cluster of five, three, five, six, nine, and ten. Piece of wood resting in behind against the five and the nine. Wow. Nice try. <laughs> oh. Good night, good night. Not a problem, not a problem. Loses seven pins of his lead. It's now eleven. 11 pins difference. We've had four marks in the match. <laughs> so again, it's not going to be a high scoring match, but don't go away. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> pressure of the lights, pressure of the championship match. Who knows? Bowler's having a tough time right now. Nice 10. Nice 10 by Dean. Picks up two pins and count. And another look. The head pin did all the work. Bill Coffold on lane 32. Buries it and gets the break on the four pin, leaving the 10. Toughest pin probably of the 10 to shoot at, which is the 10 pin. Got it, nice shot. Nice shot. And again, much like two weeks ago against Ron Root, you had this fellow down, but you don't give him the old knockout punch. He's gonna come back at you. 
Oh, only a three fill in that spare. Again, he's going to be under 100 unless he can convert this, but more importantly, he's still much alive in the match. Nice 10. Well, nice 10. For a 99. I believe it was the ball that came back. Yep. Dean DeRocher, final two, middle string, half Worcester left. Oh, only true candlepin bowlers can appreciate <laughs> this kind of a match. It's a, it's a humbling game, this candlepin bowling. Watch out. Solid five pin. Well, if Dean marks or gets a 10, he'll add to his lead. Not Won't be easy. No, not an easy mark is right, because you got that sleeper nine pin in the back. That wood rolling out will have to be removed, of course. By the time Dennis gets it down there, it may come all the way back to Dean. <laughs> Forget it, Dennis, I'll get it. <laughs> That's one thing we haven't had happen, although. They, to make this shot, you almost got to be flush on the three pin. Drive the three and then in straight back into the three, uh, five and, and the nine. As I stumble to get the words out, he put the three <laughs> pin between the five and the nine. Now well, needs these two to gain, and he's going to lose one. Well, here's the situation. Just an eight pin difference after two strings. Somebody's going to win $400. <laughs> I don't know who. 201 to 193 with one string remaining. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, Dean DeRocher and Bill Caffo move into the final string of this ladder championship. The crowd's behind them. They're ready to do some yelling. Nope, five pin again. It's a matter of each each bowler throwing two consecutive balls like the one that Dean just threw in that pocket, but they seem to make a mistake in one of the three balls and it's cost them. In this case, it probably cost them the mark. First one of these guys that's able to put maybe two marks together or three will probably win it. A big strike. strike, first strike of the day. Fourth mark for Dean DeRocher. Bill Coffold has two, both spares. And he chops out the three pin. Not quite. <laughs> Stays even with the 10, but now he's opposite the strike. One, two, three, five, six, and 10. Well, it's certainly more makeable than some of the shots he's had. Dean DeRocher on a strike. Too bad a ball going in. A little light in the one-two pocket. 
three, five, six with it. The problem is the seven. He's added nine pins to the lead, making it 17. Even when the wood starts moving around, it passes <laughs> right between. No, <laughs> the bull's on on top of their game, uh, but they're not getting any luck either. There's back spare for Dean DeRocher. And a chance to take a commanding lead the way things are going here. And it was the wood right between the six and ten that came out of the channel to spin those last two pins down. And now Bill Koffold has something to shoot at. Six and ten. Or, I should say, something at which to shoot for the benefit of the English teachers. <laughs> Mark number three for Bill. Oh, he kicked out the four pin that time and the seven. Three, six, and ten. Seven fill. Gotta hurry. Nope. Just leaving it short. Good sign of a person getting a little tired when the ball <laughs> normally breaking and his breaks sharply. Starting to straighten out. He's not getting a good follow through on the ball. We will pause here. 45 for Bill Koffold through four. Dean DeRocher leads in the match by nine plus the fill on the spare, which he will fill when we return on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Well, here's the situation. Dean DeRocher leads in the match by 10, plus his fill right here on this spare. There it, is. it was nine, but add 10 more and make it 19. Looking for the double. Light, but they're still moving. Three, six, and ten. Oh, that's a tough piece of wood. He's got to go right at that three pin, which means going straight through the piece of wood, high on the wood. Got to get up. No, I didn't get up quite far enough. That strike on spare for Dean was the first time either bowler's been able to put marks back to back in this match. And now the heat is really on Bill Koffold. Because he trails by 17, make it 19, and he's opposite 29 in these two boxes. Well, he's felt the heat the last few weeks, believe me. Right in the pocket, he really buried that one. And he still wants that wood, even that wood for, to roll up a little farther so he'd have a shot at this, but well, the other piece on the left side is moving. Well, I don't see a real good angle on either one of them. I, I have to go five pin. Tried to cut the five on the left-hand side into the nine. I don't see anything out. Well, the wood on the left, possibly. I'd like it up a little further than it is, though. I'd have to go five pin. Like that. Oh, nice wow. try. Nice try. He made two great shots. The yeah. first ball was right in the pocket, and then that shot. Yeah, very. He, he could have had that very easily. Just missed it. It's a tough break. That's the way things have been going for Billy today. For both bowlers, really, until the last few frames for Dean. Bill could really use a mark here. Well, it's going to have to turn around a little bit. That would. No. Better with it than without it. Oh, it's the three and the four. Some possibilities. I'd want to play the piece of wood next to the three pin. The one in between could cost him the shot, though. Wow, oh. capped it. Yep. Got nothing. Probably missed that by an inch or two of sweeping and across. Oh. 
four. Dean DeRocher in command here now with four boxes remaining. 30 pins, uh, 29. And a nine drop. Got a roadblock here, he wants to get out of the way. Now he's gonna have a clear shot at the six pin. a great attempt and the 10 pin is still there. Well, how things can turn around. Last week Bill Coffold threw 15 marks and here's another look at that spare attempt for Dean DeRocher which was a heck of a try. Wood in the 2 pin. 4 pin goes and piece of wood almost clips that 10 right behind it. Oh boy. Back for Bill Coffold and that's <laughs> the result of his first ball. Yeah. The diamond leave is tough enough without having the seven pin standing also. I was about to mention that how things can turn around. Last week Bill with those 15 marks he had a 382 which is the highest triple we've had in this ladder. And this week just all kinds of frustration. Well, it's now or never. He's going to have to mark out with big ones. And oh, got a break there, finally. One, two, one, three for the spear. Got it. Covers. Oh, still has a little light at the end of the tunnel. Not much of one, but... It's really going to have to hope that Dean has no marks anyways and hopefully a, a bad frame. And <laughs> Four horsemen to the right plus the seven and the nine. Again, Look another there. fine shot, and it's not going to fall. Solid five pin this time. Well, this mark will make Billy Koffel throw a double strike. Oh, it turned nice for him. Well, it's still out quite a bit from that five pin. Let's be careful on these. I want to stay to the right of the red line. Ooh. No, to the right, had to be to the right of the red line. Well, there's still room. It'll be a 131 for Dean DeRocher and 332 for the match. The question is, will that be enough? He's 139 to tie. He's uh, right now at a 103 clip. Spare up, so he's going to have to really fill him up and continually mark. He must strike here. Oh, Ooh, a fine mark. Now oh, he's got to throw a double strike. Well, actually, Dan, even no, if he even no, if he threw a triple, he'd now. come up short. Yeah, he's locked out. Now. Yep. So that'll do it. 
Dean DeRocher will be our ladder champion and $400 richer. Coming through with a 131 in the third and final string as uh, Bill Coffold wraps it up. We will take a break and come back and talk to both bowlers and have the bonus ball contest. So keep it right here. We'll be right back. The $200 runner-up check goes to Bill Coffold, and Bill, I know uh, it, it's a score you'd rather forget, but uh, it took two weeks to get here, and uh, you can't forget that either, and a check for $200 as well. No, I'll take it. Uh, they just didn't fall for me this week, and uh, they did last week, and you know, not much you can do. Funny how things turn around. Uh, yeah. Last week you were really hot. Yeah, I bowled well last week, and uh, just came back this week and couldn't do it. So. Well, we uh, appreciate you being here. Congratulations on getting Thank to the you. finals, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Oh, you will, definitely. Thank All you. All right, Bill Coffold, our runner-up, and uh, coming, down from, coming over from Milford to take our $200 runner-up check. And now we will have Dean DeRocher on lane 32 for the bonus ball and $10. Let's see. Well, it's going to be nine. And come on over, Dean, and we'll chat here in just a second. Not a match for Lillian Knowles of Chelmsford, Mass., who guessed seven. So Lillian will be receiving the uh, TV50 NHCBA desk pen and uh, also uh, our compliments and thanks for sending in her card. I hope you have yours in, too. Dean, there it is, the check for $400, the uh, large plaque and the book from Jim Fairhurst. And uh, <laughs> kind of a sheepish look, I know, because of the score. But, uh, hey, you had enough to win, so I guess that's all that's important. That was it. Had enough. Half day. He had an off day too, so. Well, you got the uh, still though. You got the marks in the third string, really. In fact, we mentioned that maybe the first guy to, to put two or three marks together would win it, and that's what happened. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Well, it was off, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, congratulations, and uh, we hope to see you again. Yep. All right, a round of applause for Dean DeRocher, please, our ladder champion, and uh, boy, just just a second, if we can here, uh, we want to thank. Uh, Dean gets congratulations again from, uh, from Bill Koffel. We want to thank the uh, large crowd that's been with us here during this ladder series. They've been very responsive and very helpful to the bowlers. Yeah, they certainly have, and it's always nice to see the crowd, and they appreciate good canopin bowling, and the scores weren't high, like I said, but uh, they've been exciting matches the last ladder championship. All right, a quick word now about uh, next week. Next week we will start with our uh, Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship, a format that we haven't tried in quite a while. Yeah, it's, it's Mixed Doubles, Scotch Doubles, where... The man will bowl the first uh, two boxes, the women will go up and bowl the third and fourth and so on. And if they get a mark in a second, the woman fills the spare and vice versa for the man. So it's, uh, it's an interesting and it's a tough, high, it's not really high scoring matches because of the, every other turn and get up there. But uh, it should be interesting to have some good bowlers. And as of now, we don't know who will be here for those six mixed doubles teams, but uh, everyone is eligible for this uh, final ladder championship of the season. So we're uh, certainly expecting uh, to see some interesting names pop up in this mixed doubles championship. So we hope you'll be with us next weekend for another edition of Stars and Strikes. Until then, once again, the final score, Dean DeRocher winning the ladder championship over Bill Coffold and the $400 ladder championship prize, $200 for Bill and the runner-up prize. And we'll be back with a brand new mixed doubles series next week. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew. Doug Brown, so long everybody from Sandy's.